बैठे थे साहे होदा हई मेरे प्यारे हबीब साथ न छोड़ा मेरा हई मेरे प्यारे हबीब आइए तेरी वफा बुलेगा क्यों कर बोला मुझ पे ऐसा तेरा आई मेरे प्यारे हबीब साथ हमेशा रहे साथ न लेते गए आशी के सबीर जा तेरा निगिया खुदा सलवार And having reached the stage where we have understood that the twelfth Imam is now born on this earth, the Hujjat of Khuda has now arrived upon the earth, and that promise of God that He will make sure everything and anything that is necessary to ensure his wa'ada, his promise of yaritha, ibadiya salihun that this earth needs to be coming under the control and the governance of ibadiya salihun my righteous servants he will make sure those things happen one of them being the actual viladat of the twelfth month and For every event that has taken place leading up to the Biladat of the 12th Imam, you do realize, and I keep repeating this, and also for, despite the fear and apprehension that it may be considered as a repetition, it becomes extremely important that these things get imbibed into the minds of our children. 
that when God wills something, He will make sure those things happen. And He will Himself personally guide events to make sure His final drama that He has identified, the plan that He has identified, the objective that He has identified for this world eventually takes, it, takes its course. With respect to the last night's events that led up to the Viladat of the Twelfth Imam, we find that there are certain things with respect to the personality of the Twelfth Imam that at times seem to defy, defy logic. They appear to be out of normal. And here I, I desist and refrain myself from using the word abnormal for fear of providing a negative overtone to this. So I would want to use the word out of normal. Events that are related directly to the personality of the 12th Imam, some of which we will, I will just point out before we continue our lecture because we're slowly moving into that phase where now we will, go, we'll, we will be discussing things in more detail with respect to the life after the arrival of the 12th Imam. And here we find that there are events or there are certain issues, certain parameters that are associated with the twelfth Imam which attend to defy logic, which attend at times such that the laws of nature that are currently known to man do not seem to, to interpret what is happening. But then again, this is what is referred to as the divine intervention. So, you heard till last evening, the Viladat of the Twelfth Imam takes place. A couple of things I want to add to that to complete the entire sequence that has taken place and to explain and, and bring out a point as to why did I say that at times the laws that govern the world that, that we are aware of, the physical laws, the chemical laws, the biological laws, do not seem to affect and touch the Twelfth Imam. A few things I will discuss now, the remaining will come as the days pass. One of the things that took place immediately after the birth of Imam Mahdi was this, that Bibi Hakima narrates this entire event. And upon narration of the entire event, that it reaches a point when Imam Askari salam takes the child, those birds take the child back upstairs, wherever they were supposed to go, based on those divine procedures that were set. Bibi Narvis begins to cry, and Imam Askari salam comforts her, saying, that nobody will feed this child except you, and the blood of no lady will enter the mouth of this child except yours. Bibi Hakima says this incident took place and, and eventually I, I returned back home, comforted and with solace that the prophecy of God of bringing his hujjah, the twelfth one, is now underway. Bibi Hakima continues this on a separate hadith. He says, after this event of 15th of Sha'ban, I, I got caught up in a lot of work. So for a very long time, I was unable to visit the 11th Imam, my nephew. She narrated 40 days. See, for 40 days, I could not visit. Till one day after the 40th day, I said, let me pay a visit to my nephew and see how, my, how the newborn child is. She said, I entered the house and when I enter the house, I see in front of me a two, three-year-old child running. So I'm wondering, where does this child come from? Who is this child? So I start looking for, for Bibi Nardis and the 40-day child that I'm, I'm, I'm assuming is there, because it's 40 days since 15 Shaban, I myself was witness to the birth of Imam Mahdi. And she doesn't find Bibi Nardis, but she finds Imam Askari, salam. So she goes and says, all the initial formalities that... I saw this boy running around in the house. Who is he? And, and where is Nargis? So Imam Askari says, this is the same child that 40 days earlier was born before you, the Knaim of Ali Muhammad. So Babi Hakima says, but that was 40 days ago. This child looks to be two to three years old. At that time, Imam Askari explains to her that this is how at times the divine powers work in our house, that a child of 40 days appears to be a child of two to three years old. Keep this in mind and park this, because sometime down the line, three lectures, four lectures down the line, when we discuss that when the Imam is going to reappear, there are certain characteristics of the Imams that will be 
very visible to us. For certain characters, that certain imams have, uh, the seventh imam has even warned us and prophesied something to us to take care and make note of the straight because if you do not know the straight then you would be one of those first persons when I say you, I don't mean you he's talking to the Ravi the seventh imam is telling the Ravi these traits need to be known because if you do not know the straight telling his companions that you need to understand the street because if you are there when the 12th Imam comes, now this is obviously a message that is supposed to be reaching to us, that if you are there when the 12th Imam comes and if you do not know the strength of the 12th Imam, you will be one of the first persons to say this man is not the 12th Imam, this is not the man who's come. But now is not the time, we still have another six, seven nights together, a lot of things to discuss, a few things will come, this part, this that according to the 12th Imam, according to the 11th Imam, the growth of the 12th Imam defied the laws of physics and defied the laws of biology. That a 40-day-old child is now running around in the house as if he's a two- or three-year-old child upon the narration of the daughter of a masoom, the sister of a masoom, and the aunt of a masoom, Bibi Hakima, who says that when I went there, I saw this child, a 40-day-old child running around like a two-, three-year-old boy. So the growth of this child is not what physical laws dictate as we know them. Let's part this and move forward. This is one thing that I wanted to just flash back upon vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, 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 the event that took place, that we described last night. But there's another thing, because as we, we, we indicate and express uh, uh, an event, at times when, when we go back to the rooms, there are certain thought processes that come that probably certain points in this may seem a little heavy, may seem a little indigestible to certain individuals. And hence the next day it becomes a little important for us to, to clarify those things that we don't want in order to enlighten people with certain events to get them more confused. So one of the things that we discussed and we spoke about during this, this ajaz and miraculous birth of the 12th Imam was the fact that when he was in the womb of the mother, he begins to talk to his mother. When he comes when Bibi Hakima is, talk, is reciting the Surah Al-Qadr, he begins to recite Surah Al-Qadr. As soon as he's born in a state of tufulia, in a state of infancy, he begins to talk. He recites the verses of the Quran. He bears testimony to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He recites the verse, he recites the verses of the Quran. He mentions the names of the Imams. He sends salwat upon everybody. A little difficult at times for normal for people like us who are not accustomed to seeing these things to realize are these real true or are they some sort of a fantasy that we are hearing because these are again as I say beyond the laws of nature beyond the laws of physics that we know them of but there are instances in the Quran and in real life that these things have taken place recorded in history if these things have happened once they can happen twice in the Quran, the very major portion that comes out, very very manifest portion, is the instance of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. That when Bibi Maryam goes out of the community and she's been given this blessing, Ya Maryam, inna Allah, you inna min ismuhu al Masih. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you glad tidings of the arrival of a son from him name of this person is Al-Masih Isa ibn Maryam and his name is Masih his actual title is Masih his actual name is Isa the son of Maryam at that point of time what does Maryam say? saying وَقَالَتْ رَبْ يَا رَبِّي أَنَّا يَكُونُ لِي وَلَدْ وَلَمْ يَمْسَسْنِي وَلَمْ يَمْسَسْنِي الْبَشَرْ that how is it possible that I will get a child when no man has touched me? 
But at this point of time, when she gets that child, and after getting that child, she comes back to the community, the community taunt her, Oh, Mariam, you've always expressed and manifested yourself to be a lady of great chastity and modesty. What is this have you come up with? This is not something that even your father did, or your mother did, or your mother was not of this character. That you go without getting in, entering into a wedlock, you come back with a child. At that time she was told, do not talk. If anybody requires you to talk, point out to this child and he will answer. At that point of time when she comes back and when they are asking her, how did you get this child? From where has this child come? She points to the child as had been ordered to her by God. Because it was a, an ilham to her, do not talk, point out to the child and he will sort out the issue. And this is what she did. So as soon as she pointed out to the child, the elders of the temple over there were flabbergasted. How do you expect us to talk to something or somebody, a child who's in a cradle or who's in a state of being in a cradle? That this little child who's just three days or few days old suddenly comes out and speaks, Inni Abdullah Atani al Kitab Ja'alani Nabiya. I am the servant of God. He has given me a Shariat, the Injil, the Bible, with Ja'alani Nabiya, and He's made me a prophet. So the Quran testifies there are individuals whom he has graced with that in a state of infancy you can talk. But this is as far as coming out and talking. But people or individuals or infants or entities talking to the mother in the womb, Quran doesn't say it, apparently this. But there are indications in the traditions, in all the books of the, of the Islamic scholars, whether it is the Shiite faith or the Sunni faith, and this is related to Hadrat Fatima to Zahra Salawatullahi wa sallam. Allahumma Muhammad. We need to know examples, right? That if these have taken place or not. Or is this just one incident or one-off incident? It's a one-off incident, there are problems. But if it has an ex ex a precedent before, then you know that this happens. With respect to Hadrat Fatima, it is narrated that at the time when the Holy Prophet announced his prophethood, and Bibi Khadija married herself to the Prophet and then she exhibited all sort of help that was necessary and expended every sort of help for the purpose of propagating the religion of God. When the ladies of the region found out that she is now supporting the Prophet, they began to boycott her. They totally boycotted her. When they, in Mecca, when they boycotted her, she would be all alone. At that point of time, with those various procedures that took place, again, the Viladat of Hadrat Fatima is a, is, a mirac is a miracle, is a miraculous uh, uh, procedure that has taken place. What went before the actual arrival of Bibi Fatima is a different story. Sometimes in the Viladat of Bibi, we will discuss it if we get an opportunity. But the baby comes into the womb of the mother. At that time, everybody, all the ladies ostracize her, Bibi Khadija. She is boycotted. The Malikatul Arab, the queen of the Arabs, is now boycotted. Nobody is even willing to talk to her. The Muslims are unwilling to talk to her because of the fear of represents from the Quraysh. The Quraysh ladies are unwilling to talk to her because her husband is criticizing their gods. So she's all alone. A time comes when she's sitting into, the, into, into her room and she begins to weep. See, look at the state that I've come into. I'm trying to help a good cause and ladies are turning me aside. At that time, it is said that Bibi Fatima begins to speak to the mother from the womb. They're saying, oh mother, do not worry. Do not worry about my father. Do not worry about the state of the events. Because this Rabbul Aizad, the Lord of the worlds, is his protector and our protector. And there have been numerous occasions when Bibi Khadija says, I would be reciting the Tasbih and Bibi Fatima would be reciting along with me. And she would say, Mama, don't worry. Mother, don't worry. If others have left you, I am your companion. I, am your companion. I will support you. Traditions in our books and in the books of the Ahlul Tasallum. So let there not be any doubt or skepticism into the mind whether such a thing really takes place or not. It has taken place in history recorded authentically in books of authentic uh, or scholars. But now we need to move forward because now we've seen the 12th Imam coming into this world. A brief little formalities that we need to just, just present so that the, the, the small children are aware of where we stand. 
15th of Shaban, the year 255 Hijri, the 12th Imam comes into this world. Imam Askari is the Imam, the 11th Imam at that time. This child is born as prophesied by the various members of the Ahlul Bayt. The Prophet has been, has been prophesizing about this arrival. All the Imams have prophesied. The time comes, 255, this Hujjat of God comes upon the earth. Imam Askari lives for five more years, from 255 Hijri to the year 260 Hijri. In these five years, this child is now under the tutelage and the patronage of the father. 260, the 11th Imam gets martyred. And 260, the five-year-old child, the Qami Ali Muhammad, the 12th Imam, becomes the Imam of the Ummah. From this time onwards, <coughs> one of the things that we know, and which has been repeatedly said, and we will come to that later, one of the most promised one of the most prominent of issues that are associated with the 12th Imam is his occultation, is his ghaiba. And this is what we need to discuss. So probably the whole of tonight and the next two lectures and probably even the fourth lecture after, the third lecture after tonight, we will be discussing issues related to the ghaiba. Because this is a very sensitive issue and we need to know because we ourselves are right now living up to the time of ghaiba, in the time of ghaiba. And we need to know what happened in the previous era when he was there but went into Ghaiba, what is happening now and what will happen before he comes and his reappearance takes place. But in order to understand the Ghaiba, the occultation, means the, the disappearance. There are, the word the Ghaiba in Arabic has two, two meanings. And, and when we discuss it as, as, as a terminology, two kinds of meanings come out of it. One ghaiba means somebody who's not present. That's why I say he's ghaib, as opposed to somebody who's hadir. Hadir means present. Ghaib means absent. Ghaibat means absence. And right now we are into the, into the period of ghaiba, means the absence of the imam. Now when we look at the absence of the imam, two kinds of absence can be, can be imagined and conjectured. One is that kind of a ghaiba when the Imam is, is totally not amongst us. That means God has said, you have to be remaining absent. You have to remain ghaib. You do not have to be present. So you move out of the community, go to the mountains, <coughs> go into an island, go climb a tree, go climb a mountain, stay away from a community. When time comes, I will give you the order, come and establish my mission. <coughs> establish, commence your mission, and establish my prophecy and my promise. That is one kind of ghaibat that we talk about. The other type of ghaibat that comes to mind is that, no, he is not outside the society. He is within the society. But we cannot see him. We cannot recognize him. At times he may come before us, but then he can disappear. And when I say disappear, it really means disappear. Alaykum salam. Just go out of our sight, poof, as we call it. This is the second kind of, of, of ghaibat that we talk about. That means when he wants, he manifests himself. When he doesn't want, he disappears himself. Out of sight, out of vision, beyond the perception of the normal vision. This is the second concept. And when it comes to the twelfth imam, it is not the concept that was the first one that he's been asked to leave the world, he's been asked to go to the mountains, but this is the second one, in which he is there, when he wants, he manifests himself, when he wants, he exposes himself, when he wants, he goes back, he withdraws, he disappears, and this is again not something that is ununderstandable, incomprehensible, and something difficult to fathom, because in this world of existence, God has created several entities, who have got the power or who have got the ability at times to make themselves manifest and at times make themselves disappear. When circumstances are prevailing which necessitate and facilitate for them to become manifest, they become manifest. And when circumstances do not facilitate them to become manifest, they withdraw, they disappear. <coughs> they literally go out of view. They go poof. 
Amongst these is entities, and I will just name a few with a few examples so that you realize that this is one of the sunnat and one of the creations based on which God runs this entire world of existence. Souls. We have the soul. The soul has the ability. It's, a, it's an entity that has been placed into this material body. Normal circumstances, we cannot see the soul. Normal circumstances, we cannot see. When a person dies, we cannot see the soul leaving the body. It's not something that is visible. But there are certain amal embarked upon by certain individuals based on the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt, whereby these souls that have left the body and are now into the world of Barza, which we are not discussing now, and very briefly we discussed on Sunday, but they go into the world of Barza and they are living there. There are certain amal and there are certain du'as expounded by certain individuals based on the teaching of the Ahlul Bayt that by means of these prayers permission can be sought from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring those entities from the spiritual world from the world of Barzakh into a material world again with the permission of God let me give you one example Allah wa ta'ala ta I mean, those who are familiar with books of Arabic and who are familiar with the Quran this is an, a personality you cannot ignore the author of that marathon book the book that raised our heads in the Islamic world as far as the Quran is concerned up to this time the book written by Allah Tafsir al-Mizan before this we did not have a work of that standard which could match up to the works of Tafsir in this world of the Ahlat al but Mizan came and then the Shiites could raise their head that we have got scholars in Quran who can write a book like Tafsir al Mizan. A book that is given reference to not only by us, but by the entire Islamic world. That is that level of Al Mizan. Sahib Karamat, this man, Allah Matabata, Ajab man he was. Ajab he was. His command over the Quran, his, his purification of the nafs. The, 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 the narratives that go about him is just amazing, fantastic. We did not want to discuss his personality now. But he had a brother in Tabriz. Tabriz is a city in Iran. This brother had a friend who had mastered this technique of getting and inviting the souls from the Barzakh. There was this particular amal that he would, amal that he would do coming from the Imams and as a result of which Whichever ruh of whichever personality that he would want to bring, he would be able to bring. Understand, when we are talking about personality or something, at times we don't refer to the island beta, they are beyond all of us. But what this man would do was, would be that he would invite the souls of the scholars and issues that would be plaguing the people and answers would not be sought and would not be available, he would ask them and he would talk to them and they would come. And this is called Ihadaru Ru, making the Ruh present, calling the Ruh. And he was an exponent, a very good, an expert in this, in this piece of work. And I'm giving an example how it works, that when the souls want to come and they want to manifest themselves, they do manifest, otherwise you don't see them. So this man is saying that I would, by means of this Amal, invite the souls and did the Ihadar of the souls of all the major Mujtahideen who had passed away, all the major scholars, and this worked with everybody. I would get the souls to come into my room based on those procedures that the Ahlul Bayt had, had explained, and they would come, and then they would come upon, obviously, with these Amal that they would do, which is a permission from God. And we would, I would talk to them, I would ask them, I would discuss issues with them about religion, they would explain things that I would not understand, and I would do, it, would do this with numerous scholars, except there are two scholars Whoever and however much I would try to get them by means of this Amr, they would not be able to come. They would not come. I would fail to get their Ruh before me. So this is the brother of Allah, Matabada, we asked him, who are these two individuals? I said, these two individuals, one was Sayyid ibn Tawus, an Ajibu Gharib scholar. 
again, they've got a huge life history, an amazing life history. That if we hear, if you were to listen to the events of these individuals and how they lead their life and the ranks that they achieve, we would really want to run away from our West. Because we would be ashamed that we humans, same flesh, same blood, look where they have reached and look where we are stuck up. But Sayyidina Tawus and the second one, said Mahdi Baharul Uloom. He's saying these are two individuals, however much I would try to get their souls, their souls would just not come. I would just not be able to be successful. I would always fail. So when I tried on numerous occasions to get their souls to come, to talk to me, and I failed and I called one of the big scholars and much ahead, and he came. So he asked them, I'm trying to get the soul, I'm able to get the soul of most major people, except Sayyidina Radhi, Sayyidina Tawus, and said, Mahdi Baharul Uloom. I'm just not able to get the souls. Why? Can you explain to me? <coughs> so this mustahid soul that has come says, you will not be successful in these two people. So this man is asking, but why not when everybody I'm, able to, I'm, I'm successful with, why not with these two individuals? I think these two individuals are the special servants of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. And till Ali does not give the permission, these people will never come to him. Sallu ala Muhammad in Allah. So you see, the, the, the point about this was that there are entities that can come and manifest it, itself and themselves when the circumstances propel, them, propel themselves. Similarly, we have angels. Angels are entities that normally you don't see them. But these angels at, at times have the ability to transform themselves when these circumstances are available to present themselves in a form that can be seen. And when the work gets over, they can just disappear. So for example, Hadrat Jibra'il alayhi salam. At times he would come to the Prophet and nobody would see. <coughs> nobody would see. But at times, when he would come, he would come in the form of a he would come in the form of a young boy, a very good looking boy. And Rawat named him as Dahye Kalbi. So beautiful, so fragrant, so decently uh, demeanor that he would come, sit beside the Holy Prophet and recite the verse of the Quran that was revealed to God, revealed by God to the Holy Prophet. And this is exactly what also took place with Bibi Maryam. <laughs> this verse that was, Ya Maryam, inna Allah hastafaki wa yubashyaruki be ghulami min. Be kalimati min. Saying, oh Maryam, this God is uh, now giving you glad tidings of a child that he will be sending. His name is Masih. How did it come about? It was an angel who personified itself in the form of a human and came to her. And then the question answer between Maryam and that angel. So there are entities that can manifest itself when they want and disappear when they want. <coughs> Same characteristic exhibited by the twelfth Imam and so far as his grave is concerned. But now, we have to understand that while we are at this, there are issues that People at times see these things and some people do not see them. At times there are various events and instances when people happen to see the twelfth demand. And certain instances when people, majority of the times people do not see them. Again these are based on certain criteria that God has set. For certain people, for certain reasons, whether it is for the benefit of that person or for the benefit of the community and you will hear instances in the next few lectures for the benefit of that particular community or for the sake of examination certain things become manifest to some people <coughs> but that very thing to the others are not manifest I'll give you one example from the Quran that how in certain cases when God wants to test people he manifests one thing to one person but the others around him do not see it and what am I talking about? That incident of Hadrat Musa. It's, it's in, Surah, in, in Surah Taha, verse number 96. When the verse says, bukum ya Samari. The Prophet the Hadrat Musa asks Samari, What do you have to say to this Samari? Now this is referring to an incident that took place at the time of Bani Israel, when Hadrat Musa was a prophet. And it's, it's very important learning point for us. All of us know the story of Hadrat Musa. But this is one point where people are not very clear because this is not usually mentioned. 
All of us know he would go and at repeated intervals to Kuhi to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would communicate with God. Kareemullah he was. One of the occasions when he was supposed to go, he left Harun behind and said, Harun, take care of my problem. Take care of my community. I'm going to God. I'm going for a long time. When I come back, I will take over. But make sure there are no dissensions, no discords. They don't mess around with, with the religion because they were newly converted. He went for a long time. When he went for a long time within the community, there was a person by the name of Samari. This Samari was a person of very uh, sinister design, malicious individual. And he had this, this desire to be powerful, desire to be, to be well-known, desire to be, to be popular. So when Prophet Musa had gone to Kuhetur, he asked and he told the people, how can you worship a God that you do not see? Look at those other tribes surrounding us. They all have got some kind of a God that they worship. This idol, that idol, this, whatever you call it, a tree, a, a pillar, or whatever. See, they have something that they see and worship. Who's your God? You do not see them. How can you worship them? So he said, yeah, you're right, you're right. So what should we do? He said, I, I, can, I can make a, a God for you. So they said, can you do that? He said, yes. He said, what do you need? He said, give me your gold. So they all collected the gold, the ladies, the men. He said, hey, let's put them into the cauldron and start eating it. The, whole, the, the gold began to melt. When the gold began to melt, he converted and he molded it into the shape of a calf. The little of a cow. When it, was, when it solidified, he brought them before and that calf would move. This calf would moo, come out with sound, the moon sound of a cow. Everybody says, MashaAllah, look at this cow, this cow, this cow is talking, and he, this is our God, we will worship him. And they began to worship. Now, Hadrat Harun could not do anything. He tried to oppose them, but they were almost on the verge of killing. No, we're not interested in your God anymore. <laughs> look at this God of ours, shining with gold, also talking. And look at the beautiful shape. He said, we will worship this God, and began to worship. Till Hadrat and Musa came down. And this is what the Quran refers to when it says that that وَاتَّخَذَ قَوْمُ مُوسَى بِحِلِيِّهِمْ عِجْلًا جَسَدًا لَهُ خوار. That the Qawm of Musa took a calf from their gold and jewelry, made from gold and jewelry. This calf that had a body, وَلَهُ خوار, And it would make a mooing sound. When Hazrat Musa came, he was infuriated. To such an extent that Quran says he caught hold of the hair of Harun and began to drag him. He says, Harun, I left you amongst my calm to protect them from going astray. And you did not do it. You did not stop them. And literally the Quran says he took his hand, he would pull his hair. And Hazrat Musa pleaded, Hazrat Harun pleaded, Musa, oh, because he was elder in rank. He said, I could not do anything. I tried to stop them, but they began, they, they even threatened to kill me. So I was waiting for you to come so that you could guide us. Then he says, Hadrat Musa, when he comes, he had a very strong personality. He had a very, uh, and a, a very Jalal personality. He was not a person of a meek demeanor. He was very forceful. So immediately imposed himself upon the people. What are you doing? What is this that you're going for? You're picking up a calf and starting to worship. He took the calf, he threw the calf, he, he, he messed around the whole setup that they had set up. And then he called Samari. And this is what this word says. He's saying, فَمَا قَتْبُكُمْ يَا Samari. Now tell me Samari. Because when he settled down things, he took care of things, he called Samari. Samari, come here. What did you mess this up? Why did you mess it up? What is your justification for it? Then Samari says something. He says, قَالْ بَسَرْتُ بِمَا لَمْ يَبْصُرُ بِهِ فَقَبَضْتُ مِنْهُمْ قَبْضَةً فَنَفَقْتُهُ فَنَبَضْتُهَا وَكَذَلِكَ سَبَّلَتْ لِي نَفْسِي Then he explains what he did. He says, I saw a certain thing that the others did not see. And I picked up some of it and I put it into that boiling gold or molten gold and this is what happened. Now this is what the Quran says. Tafsir says that when he says, I saw something that the others did not see, the ulama say, 
He saw Jibreel coming down when he was coming to give wahi to Prophet Musa. And when Jibreel came down, nobody else saw. Samari saw. Prophet Musa obviously was communicating. When Hadrat Jibreel came upon the earth, he had a talk with Musa. Samari witnessed it. The others around did not witness. When Hadrat Jibreel left, he saw the footprint of Jibreel onto the ground. I took a portion of the footprint of Hadrat Jibreel and kept it to myself. Now this footprint of an angel of Sayyidul Malak had a characteristic that whenever it is put into something, it would give signs of life, certain signs of life. He saying, I picked it up and when the gold was being molted, I put this small little pieces of earth that I picked up as the footprints of Hadrat Jibreel into that gold. As a result of which, this calf, although not living and made from gold, began to move. This was basically a test from God, shown to him of Hadrat Jibreel, nobody else but him, so that he could do something by means of which Allah would test the people. And this is how the test of Allah goes. Because in this very qaybat that we are having, the philosophy, there are certain philosophies of Bhaibata. So you understood that at times it is possible for a person to disappear and at times to make himself manifest. There are examples. At the same time, it is also possible for certain people to see a person while the others do not see him. Keep this in mind because there are numerous instances when Imam Zamana would be amongst the people, one person would see him, all the others would not see him. We are building up. Huh? This is a platform because now we are going into Kaiba. And we'll be discussing a lot of profound things. So this is just a background that we know. Certain things have taken place. Now, when we come and talk to Ghaibat, there are certain questions that come to mind immediately. That, what is the need for such a protracted period of Ghaibat? IDV, first of all, what is the need for Ghaibat? Why is it necessary for an Imam to remain away from our side? Zarurat kya? Imam ko ghaib honi ki zarurat kya? Magar aisa nahi ho sakta ki Imam khud yaha ho और खुदा उसकी मदद करे और वो अपने कामयाब अपने मिशन जब शुरू करना शुरू करता रहे आए शबे जुमा मदद पढ़े दुआ कुमाल पढ़े सबके साथ नियाज में बैठे और जब हो को खुदा का कि भाई अब जो है वो तुम्हारा मिशन आगाज होना आगाज होने का वक्त आ गया तो अपनी शमशीर को उठा और अपने मिशन को को आगे बढ़ाया और और, और शुरू कर यही मुमकिन नहीं लेकिन कुछ फलसफे हैं कुछ फिलॉसफी है ये गैबत के पीछे एक फिलॉसफी के बारे में मैं भी बयान करूंगा मोमिन के नस्बत आपके और हमारे नस्बत दो वजह और दो सबब इमाम के नस्बत शायद दो वजह नहीं आ सके आज एक ही वजह आई फिर इंशाला कर एक वजह और मुतद रिवा तो मैं ये मिलता है कि इमाम को गायब करने का सबब इमाम को गैबत में जाने का सबब इमाम की गैबत होने की वजह एक इंसानों के लिए मोमिन उनके लिए इम्तिहान का भी है और यहां जो है इस बात को मैं ज्यादा वाजे नहीं करूंगा जब हम जहूर इमाम पर आएंगे तो इस पर हम रोशनी ज्यादा डालेंगे सबब यह है एक मुख्तसर एक नक्शा में बयान करता था कि इंसान का इम्तिहान लेने के लिए इतना इतनी मुद्दत की गैबत रखी गई है कि वो इंसान के जिसका ईमान खालिश होगा वो ईमान वो इंसान के जिसका ईमान स्ट्रांग होगा बस वही इस इम्तिहान से गुजर सकेगा अगर इम्तिहान में कामयाब ना हो सका वही शख्स कि जिसका ईमान कमजोर है और वो फिर कहेगा कि ये बार बार ईमान दुनिया में नहीं जाए या आया तो इतनी तुलानी मुद्दत तक कैसे वो जिंदा रह सकता मगर इसकी तफसी बाद में आई तो एक सबब इंसान का इंसान के इम्तहान का और आप जानते हैं दुनिया में इंसान को जब लाया गया है सबब यह है कि उसका इम्तिहान लिया क्या इंसान यह समझता है कि हम उसको दुनिया में ले आए और बस वो कह दिया कि मैं अल्लाह को मानता हूं मैं रसूल की इताद करता हूं मैं अली की मोहब्बत रखता हूं तो क्या हम उसे छोड़ देंगे वो सिर्फ कहने पर हम उसे छोड़ देंगे नहीं हम उसका इम्तिहान लेंगे उसी तरह के जिस तरह हमने पहले लोगों का इम्तिहान लिया ताकि हम जान सके कि कौन सा शख्स अपनी जबान से वही चीज बोल रहा है कि जो उसके दिल में 
every claim needs to be substantiated every claim needs to be corroborated imtihan of allah the exams of allah tests and corroborates what a person says lekin yahan ye to ek falsafa inshallah hum aayenge tafsir mein guftugu karenge dusri dusra falsafa imam ki ghaibat ka iske liye thoda muqaddame ki zarurat hai bayan karu thoda muqaddama phir masaq ke mansab एक वजह तो मुतद रिवायतों में मिलती है बहुत सारी रिवायत में मिलती है वो ये है कि इमाम फलसफा गैबत से इमाम जमाना इतना तुलानी इतनी तुलानी मुद्दत फलसफा ये है कि खुदा चाहता है कि इमाम जमाना की जान की हिफाजत इमाम की हिफाजत अब थोड़ा ही अजीब लगे कि इमाम की हिफाजत के लिए खुदा को मगर खुदा आला कुल शहीन खदीर नहीं है है जरूर है मगर जरूरत क्या थी सुनिए इसके लिए थोड़ा मुकदमा इमाम का वजूद इस दुनिया में कुछ लोगों के लिए खतरा एक खतरे की अलामत है और आप देखेंगे कि जितने पहले ग्यारह मास ग्यारह इमाम शहीद करने में आए किसी भी इमाम के बारे में किसी भी इमाम के बारे में कोई रिवायत का जुमला ऐसे नहीं मिलता कि ये इमाम आकर दुनिया में जुल्म का खात्मा करेगा और इस जमीन पर जुल्म की जगह इंसाफ डालेगा और जुल्म को तो नहीं जालिमों को भी हटाएगा और इस दुनिया में पीस और इक्वालिटी को फैलाएगा किसी इमाम के बारे में नहीं सिर्फ बारहवें इमाम सिर्फ इमाम महदी के बारे में किसी भी पहले इमाम से लेकर ग्यारहवें इमाम तक ऐसा जुमला किसी के बारे में नहीं मिला लेकिन फिर भी ऐसा जुमला ना होते हुए भी इन ग्यारह इमामों को शहीद कर दिया गया तो सोचिए ये बारवा जिसके बारे में सरिहन रवायत मौजूद है कि ये आके दुनिया में इंसाफ फैलाएगा तो फिर इस बात से क्या जालिमों और टाइरेंट्स को खतरा महसूस नहीं होगा और आपने देखा कि इनके आने से पहले इनके बाबा के साथ क्या हुआ और एक दो तकरीर में आप सुनेंगे कि इनके आने के बाद जो मंसूबा बना इनको कत्ल करने का वो क्या था लेकिन ये खतरा हमेशा है कि जो इंसान तख्त कुदरत पर बैठा है वो नहीं चाहता कि अपनी कुदरत को जया होने दे वो नहीं चाहता कि कोया कि मेरे तख्त को हटाए बलो मैं जालिम हूं लेकिन मैं कबूल नहीं करूंगा कि मेरा मेरी कुदरत खत्म हो जाए और यही बात है कि हर रिवाज में मिलता है हर इंसान के अंदर एक फिरौन बैठा है फिरौन एक अजीब शख्सियत का नाम है एक अजीब खबी शख्सियत कि जो अपने कुदरत में इतना मस्त हो चुका कि खुदा के हर रूलिंग को जो है फ्लॉग करता रहा हर इंसान में एक फिरौन बैठा है रिवाज भी तुम लेना कि हर इंसान के अंदर एक फिरौन है सिर्फ तनहा फर्क वो फिर और ये फिर में ये है कि वो फिर के पास मौका मिला अपनी कुदरत को जाहिर करने का और हमारे पास और मेरे पास मौका नहीं मिला कि मैं कुदरत को जाहिर कर सकू वरना अगर हर इंसान के पास वो ही वसायल और वो ही रिसोर्स जो फिर के पास होते फराहम होते हैं तो हर इंसान हम में से एक फिर बैठता हर इंसान को कुदरत पसंद है हर इंसान को पावर पसंद है हर इंसान को अयाशी पसंद है हर इंसान को पैसा पसंद है सब अली नहीं होते सब इमाम नहीं होते अक्सर मर्दों को जो है वो कुदरत का नशा होता है और आप देखिए आपके बॉसेस हमारे बॉसेस या जो काम कर बिजनेस करते हैं और उनके हाथ के नीचे जो मुलाजमान मुलाजमीन है आप देखिए रफ्तार कैसे होता है बॉस इज अ बॉस इफ यू पेज यू टिक यू ऑफ सब इफ यू डोंट डिलीवर योर टिक टॉक एवरीबडी इज एक्सपीरियंस दैट वॉज इज पेइंग यू ना आप समझिए कोई ऐसे बॉस है बीस पच्चीस लोगों के एक कॉरपोरेट का अगर फिर जैसी ताकत हो तो सब इंसान फिर बन जाए हर इंसान के अंदर एक फिर है मगर क्योंकि मेरे पास मौका नहीं है पैसे नहीं है कुदरत नहीं है तो मैं फिर नहीं बयान कर सकता होता तो मैं शायद एक फिर बन जाता रिवाज भी दूंगी मगर यह कुदरत जो है वो इतनी नशे वाली चीज है कि कोई इंसान इस कुदरत को हाथ से जाने नहीं देता अब देखिए इलेक्शंस में कितने पैसे खर्च हुए अमेरिकन इलेक्शंस में किस लिए फॉर अनादर फोर इयर्स फोर मोर इयर्स 
खूब ये बात सही है कि काम होता है जो भी है लेकिन सबको जो है वो पावर पसंद है सब हमारे सामने झुके एस्कॉर्ट हो सिक्योरिटी जेड सिक्योरिटी हो एवरीबडी लाइक दैट और ये सब ये इंसानी फितरत है और कभी कभी यह कुदरत इतनी मस्ती ले आती है इतनी इतना नशा ले आता है कि इस वाक्य को सुनिए और आप अब अंदाजा लगाइए कि यह कुदरत की जो खुर्सी है उसका नशा कितना होता है अजीब वाक है ये चीजें जो है वो अगर हम समझ लें तो हम समझ हम समझ सकेंगे कि ये जालिम जैसे जालिमीन सदाम जैसे गद्दाफी जैसे क्यों ऐसी हरकतें करते हैं जो वो कर चुके अपने मरने से पहले वाकया सुनिए ये वाकया हारून और रशीद के जमाने का हारून और रशीद खलीफतुल मुस्लिमीन बनकर तख्त पे बैठा है कैपिटल बगदाद अकॉर्डिंग टू हिस्टोरियन अपने जमाने में हारून रशीद ने बहुत सारी चीजें ईजाद की और बहुत सारे इन्वेंशन और बहुत सारे प्रोग्रेस को जो है वो नुमाया किया एंड इन इन हिस्टोरिकल टर्म्स एज दरियंटल राइट हारून रशीद के दौर को जो है वो द गोल्डन एज ऑफ इस्लाम हिस्ट्री माना जाता है खूब बात सही लेकिन कुछ हद तक क्योंकि हमारे लिए तो एक सिया मरहला है लेकिन साथ में इमाम की शहादत यही पली बहरा हारून रशीद एक मरतबा पाए तख्त और कैपिटल बगदाद सातवें इमाम मदीना अब सुनिए ये बात है जिस तरह कुदरत नशा और होते एक मरतबा हारून की एक प्रैक्टिस होती थी कि वो मुतद वक्त जो है वक्फन व वक्फन मदीने आता था ताकि क्योंकि पता था साफ इमाम वहां और हमेशा नजर रहती थी कि अहलबैद जहां भी हो उस जगह को बहुत मॉनिटर किया जाए तो एक मरतबा मदीना कहा हम सफर करते हैं मदीने लेकिन मदीने के अंदर नहीं जाए मदीने के बाहर हम खयाम लगाएंगे बड़ा हॉल बनाएंगे और फिर एक आदमी को भेजता है एक गुलाम को भेजता है मदीने में और ऐलान करता है कि हर वो शख्स कि जिसका कोई हसब और नसब हो वो मां हारून को मिलने आ सके हारून खलीफतुलमसलम बुलाते वो खुद मदीने में नहीं आ रहे लेकिन जो हसब नसब नोबल लीनियज वाले हैं दावत देते कि आओ खलीफे को मिलने के लिए तो खुदूम पढ़ आता सब चाहते कि खलीफतुलमसलम से मुलाकात अजीम शान सबसे ताकतवर शख्स मदीने आया है मिलने के लिए दावत दे रहा है सब अपने नए नए कपड़े पहनकर जो है खलीफतुलमसलम की मिलने जा रहे अब हारून अपने बेटे मामून को लेकर आए मामून की रिवाज है सुनिए मामून कहता है कि मैं इस पूरे अभी नाम भी बिल्कुल नॉर्मल टर्म्स कि ये पूरे हॉल में बैठा था और तख्त आलिशान तख्त पर मेरा बाबा बैठा था मैं उसके बगल में बैठा था हर कोई आता था गुलाम से हुक्म था कि आने से पहले आने वाले का नाम बाप का नाम हसब नसब ले जैसे वो आए उसके आने से पहले ऐलान करें ताकि आने से पहले हारून को पता चल जाए कि कौन आ रहा है मामून कहता है मैं पूर, पूरा मसला मैं देख रहा था हारून बैठे हुए थे मेरा बाबा बैठा हुआ था एक मरतबा जैसे लोग आते गए आने वाला मुनादी हॉल हॉल और 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 द गैदरिंग जो भी था उसके बाद जैसे कोई आता पूछता अनाउंस करता वो अंदर आता और हसब और नसब के हिसाब से हारून उसको जो है पैसे देता कुछ गिफ्ट्स देता कुछ इंसेंटिव देता समथिंग फाइनेंशियल इसलिए एक एक करते आता आते लोग आते रहते थे हारून के सामने ताजीम करते थे हारून उनको पैसे देता था और वो चले जाते थे और अब मामून कहता है मैं अरसे से यह मसला देख रहा कि एक मरतबा कुछ ऐसा हुआ कि मैं खुद दम रहे तो इस बार ऐलान करने वाले ने ऐलान किया कि अब आने वाला अबुल हसन मूसब ने जाफर सुनना था कि एक मरतबा हारून खड़ा हो साथ में इमाम आ गए मामून अब ये बयान कर रहा है कि जैसे वो नाम सुना मैंने देखा हारून खड़ा हो मेरा बाबा खड़ा अब मैं ताज्जुब में कि किसी के आने पर कितना भी बड़ा शख्स हो 
मेरा बाबा कभी खड़ा नहीं होता जैसे ये आदमी का नाम सुना ये शख्स का नाम सुना ये शख्सियत के आने की आमद का का पैगाम आया तो एक मरतबा हारू खड़ा हो और फिर मैंने देखा कि पर्दा हटा और एक शख्स आता है एक खच्चर पर बैठ कर म्यूल पर बहुत ही सादा म्यूल और कपड़े लिबास बहुत ही सादे मगर चेहरे पर एक अजीब नूर माथे पर जो है वो सजदगा के निशान और अजीब वकार से अपने खच्चर पर चला रहा है एक मरतबा जैसे वो दाखिल हुआ तो हारू ने कहा रुक जाओ तो वो शख्स रुक जाता है ये शख्स सातवें इमाम की शख्सियत मूसब ने जाकर इमाम कादिम सलाम की शख्सियत हारून कहता है रुक जाओ जब न रसूल अब ये सब चीज मामून देख रहा है और ताजुब कर रहा है ये क्या हो रहा है एक मरतबा हारून उड़ता है उठता है कहता है कि जब न रसुल्ला आप नहीं आई मैं आपके इस्तेबाल में होता हूं हारून अपने तख्त से उतरता है आगे जाता है सातवें इनाम के पास पहुंचता है हाथ पकड़कर नीचे उठाता है हाथों को लेता है छूमना शुरू करता है पेशानी को छूमा हाथों को छूमा बगल में लिया कहा तुम यहां नहीं खड़े रहोगे जिस तरह दूसरे लोग खड़े रहते हैं तुम यहां नहीं खड़े रहो मामून कहता मैंने देखा मेरा बाबा सातवें माम का हाथ पकड़ के अपने पास ले आया और अपने बाजू में अपने तख्त के पास बैठा है एक अजीब एहतराम का नुमा है एक नुमाइश अजीब और गरीब इतना रिस्पेक्ट इतना एस्टीम इतना डेफरेंस कि मैं खुद हैरान हो गया कि मैंने कभी भी हारून को किसी भी साथ किसी के साथ भी इस तरह का जो है नुमाइश करते नहीं देखा खलीफतुलमसलम हमेशा अपने कुदरत के नशे में मगर आज ऐसा महसूस हो रहा है तो उसका नशा जो है निकल गया है एक मरतबा बातचीत हुई कुछ हदिया दिया इमाम ने कबूल किया उसके बाद जो है इमाम ने कहा मैं जा रहा हूँ खुदा हाफिज हारून ने कहा तुम ऐसे नहीं जाओगे मैं तुम्हें पहुंचाऊंगा हाथ पकड़ कर खच्चर तक ले गया हाथ पकड़ कर खच्चर पर बैठाया और फिर खुदा हाफिज इमाम चले गए अब जब हारून आए तो मामून से रहा नहीं तो बाबा मैंने कुछ चीजें ऐसी देखी तुमसे कि आज तक मैंने ऐसी चीजें देखी नहीं क्या बात है कौन भाई कहते तुमने नहीं भाई क्या ना ये कौन है कहते नहीं मैं नहीं जानता कौन कहते ये हजरत खुदा है तुम जमीन पर हारून कहता है ये हजरत खुदा है जमीन पर तो मामून पूछता है मगर आज तक तो मैं सुनते आ रहा था कि आप हजरत खुदा है खुदा मैं हजरत खुदा हूं हारून कहता है मैं हजरत खुदा हूं खौफ और तलवार के बिना पर और शमशीर के बिना पर यह हजरत खुदा है खुदा की कुदरत के बिना पर तो हमामून कहता है तो फिर यह अगर जो हजरत खुदा है तो फिर हुकूमत उसको क्यों नहीं दे देते तो हारून कहता है खबरदार ये अगर जो तूने बात की हुकूमत की बात ना करना मैं जानता हूं कि यह वाकई इमाम है मैं जानता हूं कि वाकई जानशीन रसूल मैं जानता हूं कि वाकई ये खुदा की हजत है जमीन पर मगर कुदरत देने की बात आएंगी तो मामून खबरदार ये बात ना करना और अबल हसन की तो बात छोड़ सातवें इमाम काजिम की तो बात छोड़ तू तो मेरा बेटा है अमर तो फी जम्बई अगर तू भी मेरे साथ मेरी कुदरत लेने के लिए सामने खड़ा हो गया तो तेरे सर को और गर्दन को उड़ाने के लिए मैं दो मिनट के लिए नहीं कुदरत का नुमाया और नशा इस तरह कि तू वलो मेरा बेटा होगा लेकिन अगर मेरे सामने मेरी कुदरत लेने के लिए आएगा तो तुझे मारने के लिए मैं जरा भी हिचकिचाऊंगा और फिर एक जुमला कहता है कि जो है सुने में पानी से जो है लिखकर जो है इंसान को डरना चाहिए अलमुल को अतीम कहते कुदरत न माँ को देखता है न बाप को देखता है न भाई को देखता है कुदरत पे जो बैठ गया वो सिर्फ तना इंसान आपने देखा शाहजहान का क्या हालत कि क्या हालत होगी यही है कुदरत का नशा जब इंसान के हाथ में कुदरत आती है और यही चीज को बचाने के लिए जब इंसान को इतने जालिमों को पता चल गया कि रसूल खुदा से लेके ग्यारहवें इमाम तक सब बारहवें इमाम की पेशन गोई कर चुके और कहा था कि ये शख्स आएगा और तमाम हुकूमतों को सरनगू करेगा तमाम जालिमों का खात्मा करेगा तो ये जालिमों को जो है हजम नहीं हो पा रहा और हमेशा मनसूबा यह था कि ग्यारहवें इमाम को खत्म कर दिया जाए ताकि बारवा ना आए 
और अगर जो आ गया बार बार तो बारहवें को खत्म कर दिया जाए इससे पहले कि वो अपने मिशन को आगे बढ़ाए और इसी वजह से एक फलसफा गैबत का ये है कि इमाम को जो है पहनान रखा जाए इमाम को गायब रखा जाए ताकि जब मौका आएगा जब मुनासिबात फराहम होगे जब शरात फराहम होगे तब हुक्म खुदा से जहूर करेगा और अपने मिशन को आगे बढ़ाए लेकिन लेकिन ये मिशन को आगे बढ़ाने के लिए मैंने पहली रात को अर्ज अफराद की जरूरत है अफराद और कुछ जनरल अफराद नहीं आप इंशाला अगर तो मेरी पिछली मजलिसों को सुनिएगा तो आप सुनिएगा कि शरायत क्या शरीद है इमाम जमाना के गुरुओं में शामिल होने के लिए हर इंसान हर कस हर कस इमाम अपने असाद अपने अर्थ सहाबा नहीं बना के फिरेंगे इमाम के गुरुह में शामिल होने के लिए इमाम के मिशन इमाम के साथ साथ चलने के लिए इमाम की मदद करने के लिए सख्त शरात है जब तक वो शरात पर इंसान नहीं उतरता इमाम कभी उसे अपने 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 सहाबत में नहीं लेंगे अपनी कंपेनियनशिप में नहीं लेंगे अपने अपने फौज में नहीं लेंगे अजीब शर्त है अजीब खसूसियात है इमाम के सहाबियों की और यही चीज हम देखते हैं तीसरे इमाम से जब खुदा कहता है कि एक वक्त ऐसा आएगा कि मैं मेरी जमीन को और मेरी जमीन की हुकूमत को साले इंसान के हाथ में दूंगा ये साले ही थे कि जो इंसान जो मिशन को कामयाब करते ये साले ही थे कि जो हुसैन के मिशन को कामयाब किए और ये साले ही हो गए कि जो इमाम जमाना के मिशन को कामयाब लेकिन सालहीन में भी रुतबा होता हर चीज में रुतबा होता अंबिया में रुतबा होता है मलायका में रुतबा होता है अवसिया में रुतबा होता है और सहाबा में भी रुतबे होते हैं कुछ लोग ऐसे थे कि जब इमाम हुसैन मक्के से निकले कोफा की तरफ कुछ लोग ऐसे थे कि इमाम खुद कहते थे चले जाओ तुम नहीं हो मेरे साथ चले जाओ ये लोग मेरे खून के प्यास तुम आओगे मर जाओगे चले जाओ कुछ लोगों को इमाम खुद हटा देते चले जाओ मत आओ खतरनाक रास्ता है मिशन खतरनाक है इसमें इंतहा सिर्फ शहादत है मरना है दूसरा कुछ नहीं चले जाओ अपने घर बीवी बच्चों का ध्यान रखो लेकिन कुछ लोग ऐसे थे कि इमाम ने खत लिख के बुलाए खत लिख और उस वक्त जब इमाम बुलाते हैं तो इमाम कुछ जाहरी चीजों को नहीं देखते कि कितना जवान है कितना ताकतवर है ताकतवर है कितना ये मुझे अपनी जंग से मदद कर सकता है इमाम दिल को देखते हैं ईमान को देखते हैं जज्बे को देखते हैं मोहब्बत को देखते हैं हबीब इब्न मजाहिर को देखते हैं तमाम असहाब इमाम ए, इमाम हुसैन करबला में सिर्फ एक शख्स है जिसको दो खसूसियतें नसीब हुई इमाम की तरफ से हबीब इब्न मजाह दो खसूसियत हबीब इब्न मजाह को ऐसी नसीब हुई कि किसी को नसीब नहीं हुई इमाम के साथ के साथ एक ये वाहिद वो शख्स है और ये वाहिद मुजाहिद है और ये वाहिद कंपेनियन है साहबा इमाम हुसैन के कि जिसको इमाम खुद सामने से बुलाते खत लिख के बुलाते और खत लिख के जो दूसरी खसूसियत हबीबीब ने मजा है की कि खत लिख के बुलाया तो सही मगर फकी कह के बुलाया मिन हुसैन इब्न अली इला हबीब इब्न मजाहिर रजुल फकी फकी रजुल किसी के बारे में इमाम हुसैन ने फकी नहीं कहा हबीबीब ने मजा है एक मरतबा इमाम का खत हबीब तक पहुंच क्योंकि पता है कि सिलसिला कैसे शुरू हुआ दूसरी मुहर्रम से फौज पर फौज आना शुरू हो इब्ने जियाद एक एक फौज को हर वक्फन पर वक्फन भेजा करता था और जब आते थे तो खसूसी तौर पर उनको ऑर्डर था कि जब खरबला में वारिद हो तो अपने घोड़ों के टापो से बहुत आवाज करना एक गोगा बरपा करना ताकि हुसैनी फौज में दहशत बैठ जाए तो जब भी आता था फौज एक अजीब गौगा के साथ आता था 
اور جب بھی آتا تھا زینب پوچھتی تھی فضا یہ کون آیا تو خونی کا لشکر آیا فضا کون آیا تو شمر آیا فضا کون آیا اب ہرملا آیا فضا کون آیا عمر سات کا لشکر آیا اس وقت حسین سے کہہ دیے زینب ارے بھیا ایسا کوئی ہے ہی نہیں یہ دوسری دوسری محرم سے دیکھی آ رہی کہ ہمارے دشمن کی فوج پر فوج آنے والا نہیں کیا کوئی ہے ہی نہیں حسین نے کہا کہ ہماری مدد کرنے والا کون ہے کوفا ایک مرتبہ زینب کو یاد آتا بھیا کوئی مدد کرے کہ نہ کرے مگر مجھے ایک نام یاد آتا ہے کہ اگر آپ بلائے تو وہ ہو ہی نہیں سکتا کہ نہ دے کون حبیب نے مزا حسین نے خط لکھا قاصد سے ہار قاصد کے ہاتھ سے بھیجا حبیب نے مزار گھر پڑتے اپنی اپنی زوجا کے ساتھ کہ قاصد آتا ہے دق الباب حبیب نے مزار دروازہ کھولتے دیکھا قاصد من انا بریت الحسین میں حسین کا قاصد ہوں ارے حسین کا نام سننا تھا کہ ایک مرتبہ حبیب کی آنکھوں سے آنسو ارے میرے آقا کا قاصد کیا بات ہے خط لے کر آیا خط کو پڑھا کیا دیکھا حسین پکار رہے ہیں حبیب اپنے بھائی کی مدد کے لیے آؤ میں ایک مرتبہ آنکھوں پر لگایا چوما زوجہ کا امتحان دینا آ کے بیٹھ گئے گھر زوجہ نے کہا کون تھا کہا حسین کا قاصد تھا بہت لائٹلی بات کی حسین کا قاصد آپ کے پاس کیا بات ہے حسین بتا رہے تھے کہ کربلا میں ہے وہ مدد چاہ رہے دشمنوں نے گھیر لیا تو حبیب تم کیا سوچ رہے اب حبیب امتحان لینا چاہتے تھے کہتے زوجہ میں سوچ رہا ہوں ابھی کیا کروں کیونکہ ماحول کوفے کا اتنا سخت ہے یہ جملہ نکلنا تھا کہ روایت بتاتی ہے زوجہ حبیب کو جلال آ گیا کہا اے حبیب تم تمہارا اپنا امامہ مجھے دے دو اور میری چادر تم لے دو یہاں دختر یہاں پسر فاطمہ مدد کے لیے پکارے اور تم کہو کہ میں سوچ رہا ہوں یہ انصاف نہیں کر رہے تم حسین پر یہ انصاف نہیں کر رہے تم فاطمہ کے لال پر اگر تم نہیں جاتے تو میں جاؤں گی اپنی تلوار مجھے دے دو اپنے امامہ مجھے دے دو میری چادر پہن کر تم گھر پہ بیٹھو حبیب نے کہا کہ زوجہ میں تو تمہارا امتحان لے رہا میں خود جاؤں گا اپنے غلام کو بلایا ایک غیر معروف راستے سے تم فنا جگہ پر کھڑے رہنا میں رات کی تاریخی میں چھپ کر آؤں گا اب غلام گھوڑے کو لے کر اس جگہ پر چلا گیا مگر حبیب ابن مزار کو پہنچتے پہنچتے وقت لگ گئے دیر ہو گئی اب جیسے وہ دیر سے پہنچے تو ایک گفتگو چل رہی تھی غلام اور گھوڑے کے درمیان یہ غلام اپنے باہوں کو گھوڑے کے گلے میں ڈال کر کہہ رہا تھا کہ اے میرے آقا کے وفادار گھوڑے آقا آنے والے تھے حسین کی نصرت کے لیے مگر اب تک نہ پہنچے شاید ان, کا ان کی نیت میں تبدیلی آ گئی ہوگی اگر میرا آقا نہ آیا تو اے گھوڑے تو فکر نہ کرنا تجھ پر بیٹھ کر ہم دونوں جائیں گے حسین کی مدد کے لیے فاطمہ کے لال کو تنہا نہیں چھوڑیں گے ارے یہ سننا تھا کہ ایک مرتبہ حبیب نے پکار اٹھے اے پروردگار یہ کیا وقت آ گیا کہ غلام آج کل جو ہے وہ حسین کی نصرت کے لیے آمادہ ہے کیا وقت آ گیا اہل بیت پر ایک مرتبہ گھوڑے پر بیٹھتے ہیں اور کہتے ہیں کہ اے میرے غلام میں جا رہا ہوں شاید نہ آ سکوں تو نے بہت میری خدمت کی ہے اس خدمت کی جزا دینا چاہتا ہوں جا تجھے آزاد کیا چلا جا. یہ جملہ سننا تھا کہ ایک مرتبہ غلام نے کہا کہ آپ نے انصاف نہیں کیا اتنے سال آپ کی خدمت کا نو کی نوبت تھی تو آپ نے مجھے رکھا رکھا مگر اب جب حسین کی خدمت کی بات آئی تو آپ نے مجھے آزاد کر دیا اے آقا میں آپ کی آزادگی کو قبول نہیں کرتا 
आप घोड़े पर चलिए मैं पैदल चलूंगा मगर जरूर हुसैन की मदद के लिए जाऊंगा हबीब ने कहा चलो हबीब चलते हैं घोड़े पर गुलाम चलते हुए आ रहा एक मरतबा कुछ अरसे के बाद सर जमीन करबला में वारिद हुए जैसे वारिद हुए और लोगों ने देखा अरे हबीब इबन मजाहिर आ गए एक मरतबा पहली बार फौज हुसैनी में खुशी की लहर दौड़ गई अरे तकबीर कहना शुरू हो गया अल्लाह अकबर के नारे बुलंद हुए एक खुशी का माहौल अब ये आवाज जैनब के कानों में खेमे में आई फिजा को बुलाया अम्मा फिजा ये पहली बार मैं सुन रही कि फौज हुसैनी में कुछ खुशी की बातें हो रही माजरा क्या है फिजा गई आती है कहती है शहजादी मुबारक हो आपके भाई के बचपने का दोस्त हबीब इबन मुजाहिर आए है जैसे हबीब का नाम सुना एक मर्तबा जैनब खड़ी हो गई और कहती है ऐ जक, ऐ, ऐ कफिजा, जरा मेरे भाई को बुलाना और कहना कि शहजादी एक मर्तबा हबीब ने मजाहिर को सलाम कह रही है ये कह के फिजा चली ए हुसैन के पास पहुंची हबीब इबन मजार हुसैन के पास है एक मर्तबा कहती है हबीब इबन मजाहिर जैनब आप पर सलाम कहला रही है ये सुनना था कि एक मर्तबा हबीब इबन मजार के जिसम में कप कपी आ गई अरे कब होने लगा कि अहलबैद के खानदान वाले ए सलाम भेज रहे हो गुलामों पर मगर फिर जैनब ने खनीज से कहा कि हुसैन को बुलाओ हुसैन आए शेख जैनब ने कहा ए भैया हुसैन मैं हबीब से बात करना चाहती हूँ हुसैन हबीब को बुलाते हैं शहजादी बात करना चाहती है जैनब खेमे के अंदर हुसैन और हबीब बाहर है बीच में पर्दा है एक मरतबा हाथों को जोड़ता है हबीब और कहते शहजादी क्या हुक्म है आपका जैनब कहती है पहले तो मेरा शुक्रिया कबूल करो कि मेरे भैया की मदद के लिए आ गए लेकिन दूसरी बात यह है भैया हबीब कि मैं सब परेशानी तो बर्दाश्त कर लू लेकिन रह रह के मेरे हिजाब का ख्याल आता है रह रह के मेरी चादर के छिनने का डर लग रहा है तो उस वक्त हबीब हाथ जोड़े हुए हैं कहते शहजादी ये मेरा वादा कि जब तक मैं जिंदा रहूंगा तब तक आपकी चादर सलामत है बस यही जुमला था जिसकी वजह से जब आशूर आई आशूर की सेपहर आई हुसैन मारे गए खेमों को जलाया गया सकीना के कानों से बूंदियां छीनी गई और जैनब की चादर छीनी गई तो सबसे पहले ना हुसैन को पुकारा ना अब्बास को पुकारा एक मर... मख्तल का रुख किया ए भैया हबीब देखिए तुम्हारी बहन तुम्हारे शहर में बेमखना